Hey everybody, welcome to ESO Vault. Today, as promised in my last video, I have a one bar heavy attack sorcerer that doesn't use any pets. This build is easy to use, and although it does require a mythic item, the two five piece sets it uses come from two of the easier dungeons in the game. I ventured onto the test server to put this together, and this build is for update 41, and it won't perform at its best until that goes live. I'm sorry to say that there won't be a companion along with me today, and I know a lot of you guys like that addition to the videos but I had to get this done fairly quickly. Today's build is called Unchained, and it was made possible by a change to the Sorcerer's skill line designed to strengthen non-pet builds. I'll get into that in the skills section, but let's start out on the character sheet. I have 64 points in Magicka, and that'll come as a surprise to some of you guys that know I spec into stamina more frequently. But since this is a heavy attack build, and it doesn't really matter, I thought I'd shake things up a bit. You can't run out of resources on these Oaken Soul builds, so go with Magicka or Stamina, whichever one strikes your fancy. Just make sure your glyphs on your armor match whichever one you choose. Magicka is up there at 34,000 points, and Health is a stout 25,000 points. Recoveries are all pretty average, and so are Weapon Damage and Critical Chance. Higher is better on Crit Chance, but as long as I'm over 40%, I can work with that. Physical and Spell Resistance are strong thanks to the Oaken Soul Ring. The character is a High Elf, and High Elf is a strong damage dealer race. They get a 2,000 point bonus to Magicka and a bonus to Spell Damage as well. I'll put the best Magicka DPS races up on the screen. My food buff is Bewitched Sugar Skulls, and that's a good choice when you don't need recovery and you just want max stats. Bewitched Sugar Skulls buffs all three attributes, plus it has a health recovery bonus. If that's a little pricey, you can run another Tri-Stat food. You don't really need the health recovery bonus of the Sugar Skulls. It's nice to have, but it's not mandatory. Since heavy attacks with a staff restore magic, any number of food buffs will work fine. And I'm using the Thief Mundus Stone for extra critical chance, as always. If you know you'll never, ever, ever group up with anybody else, you can take the lover if you want. But if you do group for a dungeon, you'll find yourself with a bunch of free penetration, making the lover redundant. Alright, moving along to skills. Skills are the most important part in any build, but heavy attack builds are very gear-driven builds. The skills and the gear go hand-in-hand hand on these. I start off with a classic sorcerer skill, and that's Hurricane. This is the stamina version, but this is the one you want because it deals more damage. I can't run out of resources here, so I'm fine slotting a stamina more. Hurricane surrounds my character with damaging winds and also provides major resolve and minor expedition. It does damage, makes me tougher, and speeds me up. This skill is a no-brainer. One drawback, though, is that it makes my character hard to see, but since my character always occupies the same position on my screen, I know exactly where he is. Next, I use Elemental Susceptibility from the Destruction Staff skill line. This reduces the target's armor by 5,000 points and affects them with all three Elemental Status effects every 7 seconds. In update 41, status effects are getting a big buff, so this skill is going to see more use than ever, and it's already in widespread use. Next, I use Haunting Curse for my class skills kit, and this is my skill I'll be casting the most. Haunting Curse puts a rune on my target that explodes after 3 seconds, and another one explodes after 8 seconds. Forget about that second explosion. I don't use it on this build. I'll get back to that. Next I use Blockade of Storms, which lays down an area of lightning that damages enemies, but more importantly it causes my enemies to be off balance, which increases my heavy attack damage by 70%. My staff is a lightning staff, which causes concussed enemies caught in a blockade of storms to be set off balance. How did they get concussed? That's from the shot glyph on my lightning staff, and that glyph has a way higher chance of applying the concussed status effect than just a lightning staff by itself. Theoretically, any source of shock damage can cause a concussed status effect, but the shock glyph is the dependable method. Now, off balance lasts for 7 seconds and then has a 15 second cooldown. During its uptime, heavy attacks do 70% more damage. I hope that explained how this build procs the off balance condition because it's important in any heavy attack build, and that's the traditional way of getting it. Alright, so I got my damage over time skills up and running, and my enemies are standing in my wall of storms. What next? Next, I hold down that heavy attack button and I don't let off of it. I'll fire off whatever skills I need by queuing them up. I queue them up simply by hitting the button of the skill while I'm holding down that heavy attack. When the heavy attack finishes, the skill will fire and another heavy attack begins. I can only queue up one skill with each heavy attack in this way. How do I know what to queue up? That's pretty straightforward. 
I'm listening for the first explosion of Haunting Curse. When I hear it, I cue that up. No waiting for that second explosion. That takes way too long. When I don't see any more lightning on the ground, I cue up Blockade of Storms. But not if I heard the explosion of Haunting Curse. Haunting Curse is my priority. Blockade can wait one heavy attack. Odds are off balance is on cooldown anyway. I'll queue up Hurricane and Elemental Susceptibility in the same way when they run out, but I always give priority to Haunting Curse. Also remember, I'm holding down that Heavy Attack button the whole time. 70% of my damage comes from Heavy Attacks alone, and you'll see that shortly. I've got two skills left on my bar. The first one is Dark Conversion, and that lets me convert Stamina into Magic and Health. This is really a flex slot, but you'll probably always want to slot some sort of self-heal here. I use Crit Surge at the beginning and end of the video. You may be wondering, why not just slot the Matriarch? Well, because you can't. Don't slot any Daedric Summoning skill. If you do, you won't get the 10% extra magic and stamina from the newly reworked Expert Summoner passive. This is the developer's vision for helping sorcerers that don't use pets in Update 41. If you have any sort of pet running, you'll get a buff to your health instead, and you don't want that here. So no Matriarch, Atro, Familiar, or even Daggers. That's right, don't slot Bound Armaments. The Daggers count as pets. Alright, we've established that I can't use a Storm Atro, so that brings me to my ultimate, and I'm using Ice Comet from the Mage's Guild skill line. You don't have to level the Mage's Guild stuff if you don't want to. Just use your Destro Staff ultimate. That'll work fine. Okay, since this is a one-bar build, that wraps up skills. I love one-bar builds. I hope I was clear on the whole process of queuing up the different skills while holding heavy attack. Your key takeaway is holding that heavy attack. That's where all the damage is. Let's see if we can find my usual punching bag. Here you are. Man, I've seen better looking bags of ice at a 7-Eleven. I start off with Hurricane and Elemental Susceptibility. Then I use Haunting Curse and Blockade of Storms. I drop my ulti and then I go into a heavy attack. I'll keep queuing up Curse when I hear the explosion and refresh my dots when they expire. I didn't do the greatest job queuing things up at the appropriate time in this fight, but that's fine. It just demonstrates at the end how forgiving this is. You see those swirling lines over his head? That's off balance. All right, buddy. See you at the 7-Eleven. 42,000 points of damage per second. Not bad for a pointy-eared elf from Somerset. You can easily do just about any content in the game with that, and without that winged twilight flapping in your face all the time. Heavy attacks were responsible for three-quarters of the damage during this fight. Nothing else was close. Hold that heavy attack button down and work the other stuff in by queuing it up. It's all about the heavy attacks. Up in the pink numbers, you can see off balance was up 32% of the time, which is right at the theoretical maximum. Burning was up almost 60% of the time, but status effects aren't really a thing with this setup. The two bar sork in the last video I did literally had every status effect going. All right, let's keep moving and look at the gear. First five piece set is Sergeant's Mayo, which isn't just a heavy attack set, it's the heavy attack set. That's because Sergeant's Mayo will proc its 5 piece damage bonus 4 times during a lightning staff heavy attack. This doesn't happen with any other weapon. That's one reason why I say the gear, the skills, and the rotation go hand in hand on this one. Don't forget the shock glyph on the staff. You need that to proc concussed, which is the status effect gateway that leads to off balance. The other 5 piece set I've got on is Storm Master, which comes from Tempest Island. You'll see people recommend a variety of other sets as a second set to pair with Sergeant's Mail, and some of them might even work, but I like to stick with Storm Master. Storm Master, like Sergeant's Mail, will apply its 5-piece bonus 4 times during my heavy attack. It works at range, and it's got a great line of crit. Speaking of crit, I've got on the Slime Crawl Arm Cops for extra crit chance, and it could just as easily be the helm, but I always seem to get the helm in the 5-piece set I need, and not the shoulders. Why am I not wearing both pieces of the Slime Craw or another monster set? Because I have to give up a slot to the Oaken Soul Ring, which is the item that makes heavy attack builds work by providing the Empower buff, along with a whole slew of other buffs. 
Can you do a heavy attack build without the Oak and Soul Ring? Sure you can, but it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. I'll probably do a non-Oak and Soul heavy attack build for you at some point, but today isn't the day. Jewelry here is bloodthirsty with weapon damage glyphs. Technically, I suppose they should be Magicka damage glyphs because those give you Magicka recovery instead of stamina recovery, but it just doesn't matter here, so I'm not going to bother to change them. Besides, extra stam recovery isn't necessarily a bad thing. You'll remember that the next time you need a dodge roll and you're out of stamina. I've got on six pieces of medium armor and one heavy because Sergeant's Mail only comes in heavy. Traits should be divines. I'm always wearing a few odd pieces that I just never seem to get around to transmuting. Do crafting. You don't want to have to farm things until you get the right trait to drop. Transmuting gear to the right trade is only about a million times easier and well worth the investment in crafting. Okay, that's it for gear. Let's look at the champion points and wrap this up. Blue champion points are Fighting Finesse, Weapons Expert, Deadly Aim, and Raffle Strikes. And that's a wrap for today's build, Unchained. Thanks to changes coming in Update 41, you can enjoy playing a heavy attack sorcerer pet free. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to mash the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. No fashion show today. I think a basic sorcerer's robe doesn't really call for that. There's still a fight at the end, though. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm Centurion, and you've been watching ESO Vault. Have a great day, and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.